A, B, C. A always, B, B, C closing. Always be closing. What's up, everybody? Now, the episode of Scare Money does not make money, don't money. Um, so today we got an awesome guest. Uh, I will admit he is kind of the reason me and Roy got started in all this probably about two years ago. Um, so it's, it's pretty cool now to have him on our show. Um, is uh, the DSP. That's how he's known in the circle of recruiting. Um, <laughs> yep. So as always, we got Roy as well. Um, you know, the guy, my the the yin to the yang of our group. Um, and, so, and, I, and I got my smart glasses on too. his smart glasses today. So please watch out for the big words that he tries to use and messes up. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yep. sir, I'm gonna let you get started. You know, it's who you are, what you do. Um, we appreciate you. I appreciate it, man. Well, yeah, this, this is uh, uh, your boy DSP coming at you live, as I as I like to say. Funny enough, DSP started as a joke, really, um, and and it just I said it once in a live, and then just people started calling me DSP, and uh, I said it because you know a door of of a, a GSP in the UFC. Yep. Yep. Is my, like like my my favorite fighter of all time, yeah. and so in a live I just I just said as a joke, is your boy DSP coming at you live, and it just stuck, and then after that. <laughs> speaking hmm, for your shit all right I'll, I'll go with it but um but yeah so so about me well first off i appreciate you having me on the show guys and um and before i, I tell everybody who i am i just have a, a really serious question and you know obviously you know both of you guys you know, pretty 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 decent looking guys uh you know clean cut but i'm curious between the two of you who's the better looking one? Oh, i am yeah that's fair enough. Okay, got no, it. No, no, it's no, I got, actually, no. It's because I got this going on, and it, oh. it, it kills them. You know, that, that, is, that is pretty unique. Kills them, son. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I mean, he, he looks, I mean, if you if you want to go for that look, he looks like a, like a hybrid of a skunk, I guess you will. Like, well, yeah. I, I, I could see him as being like a raver kid, you I'm know, kind of this you know, candy kids back in the day. <laughs> yeah, back, I, used to, I used to do those raves back. Yeah. You know, I'm 45, right. man. But I used to, you know yeah. I used to, I used to, I used to get it in. To, yeah. <laughs> You're right. Uh, but anyway, like, um, new age X man, new age X man. <laughs> but but at the same time, you like that that the ball, the glasses look, I and mean, that's also very very electro, very studious, but also very like like strong and protective woman. I mean, that's that's two very different, you know, kind of kind of choose your adventures, if you will. But um, fair enough. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so about about myself, uh, David Stephen Patterson, DSP as they call me. But I've been been a uh, been recruiting now for uh, shit since '90s. Oh, can I can I curse on here? Yeah, you're fine. Go I'm not, I'm not gonna. All no, right, so well, <laughs> all right, so I've been recruiting since '97. Uh, mm. Started off actually doing day labor. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, so so uh, uh, basically, I would wake up at four o'clock in the morning and dispatch you know yeah. homeless people out to uh, to construction sites. And uh, did, uh, and so I did that for a couple of years. Then I stopped at the call center for Kelly Services. So I was a Kelly girl for a couple of years, and then uh, and then I got into search. And I'm like, oh my god, this is amazing <laughs> seeing these. I never thought people would pay such money just to yeah. hire somebody. And then um, and then got into that world back around 2000 or so. Mm-hmm. And a couple of years later, I went out and started my own independent uh, company. And uh, yeah, and here I am ever since. And then, and then a few years ago, um, I don't know if you're going to talk about this, but you know, a few years ago, I kind of I got burnt out on the recruiting thing and yeah. still did it. But you know, you know, it's great money, but at the same time, yeah. I just got a little burnt out and hard, wanted yeah. to do something different. Yeah, and I, I so, so so I got into coaching, digital marketing, training, and yeah. so now it's kind of gotten to the point where. In my it, heck, my websites are down now. Everything's down. Like my whole web, web presence is, is completely down. But we're mm. in the process of I've uh, we talked about this, but I'm actually splitting the company. I've got people yeah. that I've hired on the recruiting side, and then I'm yeah. I'm taking the digital marketing side to, and, and pushing that forward. Yeah. So with that being said, um, I have uh, that's a bit about me and what I'm doing right now. Okay. Oh man. So yeah. Now which is very rare. I, actually, I, I usually go on and on and on and, and on. You know what? It's a, it's, it, we're, if there's anything that me and Roy always say is that you'd never put two recruiters in a conversation, let alone three of us. <laughs> so uh, if any of us stopped talking at any point, I'm sure it took a lot of self-control. Um, 
So, and that's funny. I was just about to ask you, like, so what is your company actually called? Because all we know is like, you know, the executive recruiter part of it. Um, you know, oh, okay. Yeah. Case. So, so the, the search firm is called the Kineta Group, although I had labeled myself as the SAP recruiter because yeah. I was recruiting you know, in, in SAP, but I, I just hired in uh, a, a practice leader who's going to be running that. So he's actually going to be the new SAP recruiter and we're yeah. putting that, that underneath him. And then, and then actually um, um, one of the uh, uh, neat things about this is that as I build that out, I've hired him. Uh, he is going to be the client, although I still own the company, but exactly. he's going to be an internal client mm -hmm. for the digital marketing side of the business, which is the, the digital headhunter. Yeah. Uh, and, and we're going to act as the, the chief marketing officer for that and grow it. And so my plan is, is with that as the model, mm -hmm. I want to start. So, it, so let's say, for example, somebody comes to my company, they want digital marketing help. We can do full on lead generation. We can do full on training. I've got the best training in the business bar yep. none yeah. uh best training in the business um uh, and the most unique for sure and I, i'm kind of like the crossfit of, of recruiting training yeah, by the way. Uh, yeah 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 and i'm like i'm like you're gonna work your bro? ass off my that. program <laughs> yeah. um but um but in, in essence you know be, being a chief marketing officer of these these independent recruiters small search from owners but also if you want to work for me they can actually underneath the kineta group uh banner uh, we can completely brand them themselves. Uh, they still earn you know, uh, yeah. earn a much, much higher percentage than, than they would otherwise, but they would also get the full power of the digital headhunter as yeah. their CMO and actually branding them personally in there, yeah. whether they're, you know, Oracle or they're doing like, I don't know, pharmaceutical or yeah. finance recruiter in Cleveland, whatever, you know? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's, um, that is uh, in the works. So that's the, that's the plan. Would you, have, would you ever have thought in uh, was you just say 97 <laughs> I would have thought I felt ass backwards into this shit man <laughs> I, I, I answered you know hey uh, so you so you kids may not may not know this but there used to be a thing called newspapers <laughs> right ah. and you open it up and you're like I thing? need a jobby job and you're like there's a little <laughs> little thing about that big and you're like oh shit that's a fax number why don't you go fax my resume to that and and I faxed my resume. Actually, no, a girlfriend I had at the time did it, and then mm -hmm. I got a. Uh, she she was she was my recruiter, if you will, and uh, she uh, faxed it to this place called Labor Ready, yeah. and I got mm -hmm. hired there doing the temp work. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of how I fell into it. I didn't you, plan for it. Wow. It happened. Yeah. So I mean, with, with the, I mean, honestly, like going back to the old days of, of the newspaper. Like since you've been doing what you're doing now, have you ever circled back to the old school method, uh, in a sense, like uh, like letters or using the newspaper or anything? Like, ha does it still have any value today, in your opinion? Yeah, do smoke signals work if no one else is doing them? Um, you know, I'm out here in the corner and you're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, uh, so to your audience, he's not seeing me. It looks like I'm riding a pony, but I'm really doing smoke signals. <laughs> So it's kind of the same. It's a similar similar movement. Um, uh, so that's that's what we call cross functional fitness. Um, but um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, yeah. So old, old school. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm a fan of old school stuff. So you know, it comes to um, uh, the, the marketing, for example, and, and we're selling your business. You know, everybody everybody rags on cold calls. Cold, you know, trainers do this all the time. Cold calls are dead. You know, no more cold calls. You know, leads on demand, all that kind of kind of crap. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, like they they still work. I mean, yeah. it's just like it's just a distribution channel. If no one else is doing it, then do cold calls to in addition to everything else. But like uh, uh, like newspapers, you know, I don't do. But uh, but direct mail, you know, you can send you can send direct mail yeah. to the the people you want to work with and yeah. do that once a quarter because well, that's going to get past gatekeeper for sure because yeah. they see national package being sent. And uh, if you make it really unique or very very kind of funny or topical or whatever or value. Yeah. Um, giving, you know, then yeah. Uh, in fact, another another great one is is handwritten cards. There's a service called Handwritten. Oh. Have you heard about that? Heard I, about handwritten. I, I know that there's companies that will do that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So so this it's a robot writing it, yeah. but it looks like real handwriting. You can pick your handwriting, and you can actually uh, integrate your CRM with uh -huh. that. So you talk to somebody and just and just write a message in your CRM and it'll it'll zap it right over to handwritten or whatever company you're using and it'll go for like 3 or 4 bucks 
probably four bucks. They'll send out a handwritten little card to whoever you talk to with Dude. no effort, you know? Like, so, so we call that RGM, recruiter. Yeah. So in the military, or Air Force, uh, recruiter generated mail. And, and that <laughs> consists of us sitting at a table with a box of envelopes and our, and our printer that prints out all the stuff. And if you're lucky, and so when I went, I was a, I was a health professions recruiter before I came to California. So like, you know, doctors, nurses, whatever. And I remember when I showed up, um, we actually had one of those folding machines and I was like, where has this been all my life? And they were like, well, you come to HP, you know, think, you know, things get a little nicer here. And I was like, okay. So yeah. So we just shove paper in this thing. And we would just sit at the table and just bullshit for just like two hours while we're just stuffing envelopes, like putting stuff in. But you're right. Um, the cold calls. Yeah, thing is- to mo- yeah, the U.S. military needs to modernize a little more, man. I mean, um, and- <laughs> but, but, but then again, if they, if they, if they, if they implement the folding machines across, across the, the entire, you know, recruiting arm in the military, yeah. they might, they'll probably be like a, like a $5 billion project. It'll take oh, like oh, two yeah. years and then, you know, I think I think the text message thing. I know, like me and uh, me and Roy use the same system, and I know, like we like we have the functionality to like put somebody in, and it and it tells what the phone number is, and then it like what carrier are they a part of. You can put all that in, still won't send a text message to them. I'm like, man, yeah. if they could, just, yeah. And so the calls thing, though, you're right. Uh, so as I've been learning these last couple of weeks, as you've seen, I've just been hitting up everybody, and. Um, same thing. Every time I talk to somebody, they're like, hey, man, people are going to tell you don't do cold calls. Do that shit. They're like, because no, because yeah. it's way too easy to just ignore your LinkedIn message or your email message. Well, well the thing is, man, is like, so the whole cold call thing, that, that's been an annoyance for me because like, I get mm. the two, two camps, right? You know, cold calls are dead. And then the other, other old dogs are like, you know, get, get on the phone. No, no, no. And like, they're both <laughs> wrong, honestly, because it's mm. like, it's like telling somebody, I don't want to get in shape. Get to the gym. Uh, okay, and then what? Yeah. What yeah. do I do? Like, you yeah. know what I mean? And you can go to the gym, work out crappy, you never get any results. Or, you know what I mean? So you need to, um, so it's not about, because a lot of people make cold calls, and I've done the same thing. You're going to make a dial after dial after dial, and you're saying the exact same yeah. thing, mm-hmm. and what you say sucks. Dial for dollars. <laughs> dial for dollars. And what happens is you're, you're trying to get this, like, thing where it's, uh, you're trying to, to happen upon a client when they happen to have a need and they happen to be sick, yeah. be sick or they're recruited, they happen to be looking for some. It's such, uh, it, it's it's such a uh, a loser's game, especially right now because there's so much competition. Yeah. And so for me, in the cold calls that I train now, you know, I, we completely turn on its head. Like we're so everybody says the same thing. Uh, Hi, Bob. This is David Patterson from the Kinetic Group. How are you today? <laughs> So the purpose of my call is, and you're like, what? Hello? <laughs> you lose them, right? And so um, in, in my training, we actually do a completely opposite. Like we don't, we don't introduce ourselves. We don't say, how are you today? We don't yeah. say what company you're from. We yeah. just being like, we just sort of say, hey, this is a cold call. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. We just, just, we, just we, hit them with it. One of somebody else told me yeah. the same thing. They were like, just tell them when you get on the phone, hey, you don't know me. I don't know you. I'm calling you, you know, because of that. <laughs> well, no, we do. So you, you know, if you guys are all walk you through it, it's pretty cool. It's, it's pretty it's pretty interesting um, way to do, do, do cold calls. Everybody's always, everybody's always afraid to do it. Um, and I didn't make it up. It's not like I, I, I invented it. I invented mm-hmm. my style of it. But it's, yeah. it's um, but in essence, it's, it's, People don't like salespeople because there's lack of trust. Like they, they don't trust right. salespeople. Yeah. And so um, how do you build trust through um, through radical honesty right off that and it throws them off? So if we're to call <laughs> and I'd say, say, I'd say hey, hey, Bob, hey, this is a, and you kind of laugh at you. Hey, this is a, this is a cold call. Yeah. And you pause. So you're like, <laughs> see, and when you pause and you know they're not going to hang up, you're showing power, right? You're taking yeah. control. Yeah. And hey, this is a cold call right now. Do you want to hang up? Pause, pause. Or tell you what, let me tell you exact, exactly what I'm calling for like 30 seconds. And you could tell me if it makes sense to continue. Is that fair? They'll always say yes, because it's yep. an upfront contract. And you get mm-hmm. and they feel like they have control now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then and then it gives and you don't necessarily need to do it in 30 seconds. Like no one's gonna time you unless they're, yeah, yeah. they're an a-hole, and very rarely did they ever do. <laughs> but what it does in their head, so, so, so say like let me have a minute or two, or let me a few minutes. 
because then it's 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 a uh, it's it's a long thing. You say, hey, yeah. to just real quick, thirty seconds to exactly what I'm calling, and then you can tell me. Like I do, I point because yeah. I'm like trying to emphasize. Yeah. You yeah. can tell me if we should even talk. Is that is that cool? Is that fair? Yeah. And they're like, uh, yeah, and or what's this about? If they say anything at all, what's this about? I take that as a yes. Yeah. Yes, I take it as a yes. They say they say. They say, I can't talk right now. I take it as a yes. I say, oh, no worries at all. I'll call you back. Tell you what. I'm going to tell you exactly why I'm calling, and you should tell me if I should even call back at all. All right, anyway, I just the, – the, by the way, my, my style of objection handling is basically like uh, positive K. Remember positive oh, K yeah. from, you know, what your girl got to do with me? No, no, no. What's, what's, what your man got to do with me? Yeah. Ain't trying to hit at, see? And she <laughs> says, I got a man, and he says – What's like, I've got to do that and try to get it. So <laughs> brushes the objection off and keeps going. <laughs> Way you should handle objections when you're cold calling is to think positive. Okay, brush it off and keep like if if they if you email back, email them something and they say no thanks, pretend like you don't see the no, <laughs> pretend like you just see a thanks. Like oh sure yeah my pleasure anyway and keep going. Like it's it's usually smoke screens and you just, yeah. the more oxygen mm. you give a smoke screen mm. it that it creates this real objection that they give it to you twice that's different but yeah. usually it's just a you know what it is it's like the way i describe it it's kind of like this right if um when you email or call, whatever it is and they're like i do use a recruiter i don't need it, whatever they, they say like uh, a yeah. smoke screen mm -hmm. it's usually a defense mechanism so if you know, if, if you're like a bar, let's say you're married and you're at a bar, you know, hey, hey, kids, you know, there's things used to they used to call bars. <laughs> you overpay for watered down liquor. Really awesome. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, those are much, those those are fun, by the way. Those much, are fun. Yeah, those are fun, especially uh, in Korea. Be, uh, <laughs> oh, I've uh, I've heard. I've never been. been no um, I was there for two years. <laughs> if you uh, if you uh, uh so see, so, see, so, are you what they call a soul man? I was always in soul. You get it? I was always in soul. Always, 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 always um, that's, bad, that's a bad joke. It's okay. Um, <laughs> so say you're at, a, you're at a bar. Yep. And, uh, you know, you say, let's say you're married. Your wife's going to meet you in a few minutes. You're just bored. You're a recruiter. You turn next to you. There's a girl, and she's pretty. And you say, hey, hey, how you doing? You're be social. And she says, oh, I've got a boyfriend. She may or may not. But that's a defense mechanism because she's, she's pretty. She's hit on all the time. She assumes you're doing the same. And so you're like, Oh, oh yeah, sorry, yeah, that my, my wife's actually on the way, whatever. Uh, sorry about that. Like she'll probably feel bad. I'm like, oh, sorry, you know. And then you get into the conversation, right? Yeah. If, but if you were to say, oh, my mistake, I apologize. <laughs> what you just told her was that you weren't interested in conversations. You were interested in something else. And so, mm -hmm. be oblivious. And the first objection they give you, just keep going. And usually, you'll work past it pretty well. It's when they give it to you again, <clears> and you're like, okay, then it's a real thing. People take. Anyway, so so when you do like these, so when you any back to cold call, so when you do this like um, uh, thing where you just radically honest, you you buy a little bit of time, and they can go right into say, hey, here's what I do, and and instead of talking about like your thing that you do, you talk about the pain that you solve. Yeah, I work with blank, and and they're and they've got this pain, pain, pain. It impacts their ability to do, to do this. Yeah, you know, impact. Uh, is that worth a three to five minute conversations that resonate yeah you're just trying to find out if they're feeling that pain if they're not you move on if they are boom you got you got you got you got an in you got you, you baby yeah. step to a longer conversation about that pain you know yeah so that's why that's why i like um cold calls because just like with emails and linkedin all that if you come in radically different like i i don't know of any other way anybody can get a, a good two or three minutes to talk about your unique selling proposition to a prospect, yeah. Then if you literally call them and they happen to pick up, that that's like the best. Yep. You know, and that's why cold calls are so awesome if you do them right. Yeah, especially nowadays where everything's blocked. Like, I'll say, like I'm trying. I'm like I have a. I'm working with somebody trying to help them get a job, and so obviously, like, they're telling me what companies that they like that they found, and I'm like, all right, cool. Like, let me contact them, whatever. Find a phone number for some people is you got to damn be a PI, <laughs> but yeah, you can do yeah. it. But you can do it. Like one guy I found on LinkedIn didn't have his number listed in her contact information, but he had his resume on LinkedIn. And guess what his resume has? Email, phone number. Oh. And so it's like, 
that's that's I, I feel like that's another reason why is because they're just not used to getting phone calls or they have like secretaries it's like no they're not available right now <laughs> <laughs> oh dude it is and it, 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 even, even voicemail if you take the voicemail thing on it's like obviously most people don't pick up especially when, you're, when you're when you're doing bd yeah. um um and so and that's not bondage and domination by the way that's, that's business development in case <laughs> i'm not sure what kind of audience you got they assumed it was the other i thought it was but the other. um <laughs> uh, by the way kids always bring a whenever, i always say to my my trainees whenever because i'm, I'm a bit different when i train and i we do these role plays yeah sessions and i say I always bring a safe word i'm oh. in oklahoma <laughs> um it's important to say for the real point of the scripts um so <laughs> So oh, 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 I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just tripping off a, a, a safe He's word. I'm trying to process it. Like he said, a safe word for improv of a set. Okay, you know what? Just keep going. We uh, say because we do we do scenarios later. in recruiting school where they like just go in on us. <laughs> layers. Um, where was oh, even going? With oh yeah, so um, but here's like a voicemail, right? Like we're we're experimenting with we're experimenting with these um, voicemails. Yeah. So we're doing our BD, and you get voice most of the time. Now it's called a frictionless voicemail. Again, I, they're not making it up. We're just kind of modifying it for recruiting. But in the voice, we're literally saying, "Oh, hey, sorry, I didn't catch it. Don't call me back." Hmm. And then we say, and then we just say, "But hey, I'm gonna send you an email right now, and I want your reviews. Got a little video on it, and maybe you know, sell, sell, sell. Da da da. If this is relevant to you." reply back to that and we'll talk or we'll, we'll set up a time, whatever it is. And then what it does is it, 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 it kind of like it's a pattern, it's a pattern interrupt and it keeps them from deleting the, the voicemail. Cause everybody mm -hmm. says, Hey Bob, this is David Patterson for the Kineta group. Sorry, I didn't catch you today. My number is, yeah. And you always leave the number twice and dig the standard thing that we always say. So you know, it's like, yeah, Hey, don't call me back. Okay. Then, then they listen to it. They're and like, then, well. And then look for the email and, and if you're given them a path to follow, the more things they do for you, it's like a yes ladder in a way. Exactly. You're, it's like mm -hmm. small investments. And then they, yeah. they look at the email and now they're, they're invested. And then, mm -hmm. and then they reply back and there like, you oh, go. I might as well see and, what it's about. <laughs> and you give them the power. If you give them power, like, you know, you say like in a cold call, like, hey, um, it's 30 seconds, whatever. Then you could tell me, right? Yeah. Or like, hey, check in the email. And if it's relevant to you, just reply back. And we'll da, 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 da. Uh, or, you know, doing a sales meeting. Hey, you know what? I just want to make sure at the end of the call that you're in a position so you can let me know if this is something you want to move forward with. Cool? Yeah. Yes. And then all of a sudden there's this contract in their head and now they got to tell you, but they also feel like they have power. Yeah. Which makes them feel safe and then they're mm -hmm. more open and less likely to, to you know, yeah. keep you at bay, you know? Yeah. This is the stuff I always tell. So, like, I've been reading a lot of books or listening. To, I would say reading. I've been listening to a lot of books. I was about to say, because you don't uh, read nothing. I don't, I've been, I tried, man. I just, I tried. I, like, <laughs> I never I tried, learned how to I, read. I, never, I tried to read, I tried to read uh, Grant Cardone's 10X. And even though it's good, like, I'm just not, I just can't sit down and, like, I can't focus on anything. And so I, I just listen to stuff. But anyways, um, two biggest books I've read recently that I'm always telling Roy about is uh, Chris Voss's Never Split the Difference. And then um, I've heard of that one. I haven't read it yet. Man, I used to call him almost every morning, like, you won't believe the shit that I just learned, man. man. Why haven't we been doing this? Um, and then another book I'm reading right now that was recommended by uh, one of the previous guests was it's called Influence. And he talks about kind of what you're talking about, like the like how to adjust the way people are thinking or how to influence them, obviously. And it's funny what you're saying because that's kind of one of the same thing that Chris Voss teaches in his book is he talks about um, taking the power or letting people think that they have power. Yeah. So like he's talking about in yeah. hostage negotiation, like some, you know, they call me like, I want $15,000, you know, blah, 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 or else you're not getting your girlfriend back. And you can immediately take power away from the person by saying, well, how do I know she's alive? Yeah. And they're like, shit. Like, <laughs> we got we got to let him talk to her because like otherwise he's not gonna give us the money because he doesn't know if she's alive or not and you're like it just you know so I, I think that's that's very interesting well, as you can tell. Well, I think a lot of it, uh, I see a lot of. Um, okay, so if a good salesperson, if you mm -hmm. want to be a good salesperson, guru, or whatever it is, influencer, 
um, you have to be only work out of your comfort zone. And, and what I mean by that yeah. is not necessarily go, go make the calls. And, and that, I mean, that's important too. But what I mean is that like a lot of people, they're satisfied with what they view as a positive encounter, even, yeah. even if it's a no. Hey, I had a good conversation. They view it as a win. But what they do is they don't, they go and they try to be somebody's friend and they just try to be kind of really friendly and they view it as a win instead of, taking a step back and taking the actual steps you need to take to properly influence them in the direction that you want them to go. Yeah. And it's kind of like, it's kind of like this kind of like, I always like in sales to, to dating, right? Yeah. You know, it's, it's, we, all, we always say that. It's always. Yeah. That. <laughs> it's, so, so if you, if you go on a, on a date or meet or meet, or meet a, a nice young lady and, and you're super platonic friendly, you're super friendly <laughs> and you're all that. You know, like, well, that's a win. And then you go for the kiss later. And she's like, uh, what? It's kind of weird. You got to be willing to take the risk to be a little dangerous and be, be a little flirty because you might get rejected, but you're taking the proper path to get to the kiss. And so when she's, so when you go for the kiss, she's expecting it. It's kind of yeah. the tension's been built. And a lot of people, a lot of salespeople are, have this sort of um, mentality or they just want to go for the quick win and feel yeah. good at the end of the day like they even though they didn't make any sales or or or, or book any appointments or whatever, whatever their kind of yeah. goal is and, and i think a lot of it for a lot of people they they have to get to this point where they have like if you're if you're a young man and i've been in this situation when i was younger you know you have so many platonic dates where you have like so many like well it's nice to meet you and you're like eventually <laughs> you're like you know what i i I, I I don't care if if, if I get slapped like I'm, I'm gonna I I can't do that anymore you know and then you start taking proper um, action to learn okay how do yeah. I influence how do I yeah. same thing in sales eventually you either get out of sales yep. but you're always gonna be <clears throat> super below average or average but it, you, but you see those folks that are like you know you're smarter you know you talk better yep. than them yeah. but they're so much more successful than you're like. At a certain point, you have the emotional fucking leverage to say, you know what? I am, I'm sick and tired. Yep. I'm not closing shit. W yep. What do I got to do to be uncomfortable and start, start, start closing? Because, you know, yep. eventually, because otherwise, you know, what else is going to get you to on a cold call say this a cold call before you say anything? Like, yeah. you got to be, have some emotional leverage to have the, to have the, 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 the balls to do that. Yeah, you know? yeah. You know, no, you're try right. it. I mean, that makes sense. I mean, because I always feel like for me, like coming into recruiting, like you said, like I always like related it back to like dating. So I think that's why, like when I came into recruiting, like I was married, but like, but when I was single and like I was going to the clubs and going to the bar, it's like, that was fun to me. Like I got to, and like you said, like just take a risk, try this and try that. Every once in a while, you'd be like, dang, like that, that sucks. But after a <laughs> while, like I, <laughs> we're going to all. That didn't work at all, but like I think it really, it helped me a lot when I came into recruiting because I had like a path, like I had like a somewhat of a blueprint, and I just took the other knowledge that I got, some people that I worked with, and learned from them a little bit, and yeah, just and just right, got boy, that smooth jazz bars. Hey, young lady. <laughs> yeah. So, so we got, we got, we got the, the 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 raves and the the smooth jazz bars. Quite a quite a mix, gentlemen. Um, you should see I the was, pictures um, in his house. It screams. <laughs> <laughs> smells of rich mahogany. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, they have a they have like a they have like a, a bearskin rug in front of a fireplace. Damn, I do got a, I got a, yeah. I, got, I got a skin rug, but I didn't buy this. I didn't buy that rug. I didn't buy that rug. <laughs> Wife bought the rug. Wife bought the and rug. It's polar. It's polar bear too. Point. That's oh. fancy. I don't know what it is. It looked like some some great <laughs> value shit, but I don't know. Um, but be right, yeah, the dating thing. I think a lot of uh, um, a lot of the uh, another thing I I I, I like in, or another reason why I like this dating a lot is that you get the folks that are the natural salespeople that that get the get the gab, mm -hmm. and they always seem to have a ceiling because they rely on it so much, and they become and they just naturally can get what they want, but they don't learn structure they don't learn process they don't learn and sometimes it's the sometimes just the it's the guy that was you know kind of uh nerdy in high school smart and just figured it out and the next thing you know 10 years later 
he's got a business. He's got, he's got, he's, he's got women love him. He's got money. He's got all those things. And he's really scared person the, that, and Blake, the quarterback, everything was handed to him. He, he never had to learn the skills, the drive to, to learn how to work and figure things out structurally. Okay. And, um, you know, and poor Blake. <laughs> RIP <laughs> Blake. Blake. <laughs> <laughs> so what, um, so, you know, like I was talking about earlier, is like, you know, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of the audience we have currently is like military recruiters. And like, a, you know, same thing I told you is, you know, we get really good training, but a lot of times we don't, we don't know how the civilian world works. And, you know, we work for an organization that like feeds us leads and things like that. Like, you know, I'm not saying way the work that people do to, to do lead generation, but it's just not the same. You know, like, and I'm on that side of the fence right now as I'm learning how to do all this. Like I tell Roy about every day, like, hey, like I, you know, I talk to Ben or I talk to Tim and like, I talk to another guy, Chris, and like, this is what they said they do and stuff like that. And I'm like, this is oh, so much more different. Um, like what type of, what type of things would you suggest like people really need to start working on now before they you know, get out of the military, whether it's retirement or they're just done, if they're recruiters or even if they're not recruiters, like, but they, but they know they want to possibly get into the sales or recruiting game. Mm -hmm. um, well, one thing I would say, you know, obviously they're, they can't start the business yet necessarily, but I always say that you don't learn, you, you don't, you don't start a business knowing how to start a business. You learn how to start a business by starting a business. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and which I can tell you the story, how I started mine. Cause I, I, I did all the things wrong that you could that you could you ever possibly imagine and I yeah. still made it. But um, um I made but, it bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, um I uh uh no, yeah I'll tell that story but uh, I, I will say probably one of the best things you can do obviously is 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 learn sales and if you have a chosen like niche that you want to get into so for example you're recruiting IT or job whatever whatever your, your thing is and there's a niche for everything I mean there, there's yeah. there's you want to be a surety bond uh, uh, recruit be a surety bond recruiter I've, I've known yeah. so many different niches and um and, and go learn it and go and on top of that don't wait until you're in business get on linkedin and start connecting yeah. to them and and and, and mm -hmm. asking can i get on the phone with you can i learn yeah and 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 when and this goes into into that so you know people want to start the business and then learn how to go and talk to people or, or book calls as opposed to when you're in right now get on linkedin go to there's no law against you contacting you know uh, 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 Stuart Swanson, who is a pharmaceutical rep in San Francisco. You want to be, be yeah. that guy calling, like, pick his brain. Yeah. Like, there's no reason why not. Because, and the more you can learn to bother other people and yep. intrude on their space, yep. you know, like, that's what I've been learning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's like, you got to, like, go to the mall and high five. Oh, that's him. Hey, that's him. Yeah, go to hey, the mall and hey and, all I'm it, saying, all our guests. Who got him? <laughs> you, you, it, uh, what, what you, what you saying, DSP? You, you, you doing it and it works. But go, yeah, but go, but go to the mall and high, start high fiving people, you know, or at least when you right. could do that. But you know, like you learn, you're not gonna, yeah. <laughs> You know what? Go go to the mall with gloves and a mask and be and do like six foot away virtual high five and literally stand there and don't leave until they virtual high five you back from six feet away. Why? You're not gonna die. You'll 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 give them a story for the rest of their other week. They'll be telling everybody about it, and you will learn the fact that you can go do anything you want in this life. And there's and the only thing stopping you are the imaginary rules you have in your head, the bullshit rules that yeah. you think you have to follow, and the thing keeping people from being good in sales or doing anything at all is like realizing that the the world is as it is because there's a game that has been that has been set okay so for example um there's a game that people uh think that they need to they need a job they need to write the resume put it in the, go, go to the the job board look for a posting submit it through and and, and wait for my call now if you break the rules of that game you actually can, uh, you send a way better chance of getting a job than maybe a more qualified person, but you broke the rules. But yeah. if everybody breaks the rules, then the game falls apart. Correct. So you have to recognize mm. the game for what it is, find out what rules you can break and be one of the one first, one or two or three percenters that go break those rules. And, 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 and you can, you know, uh, uh, have that life that you want 
or go be rest of the sheep and 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 go and um, you know I can't start my business yet. I got my business plan ready. Yep. You know, yeah. don't be one of those people because you'll never make it. You know, hundred percent. Just go go break shit. Yep. <laughs> see Roy. See see. <laughs> no, that's 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 perfect because uh, my client yeah. right now that was, she asked that same question and she was like, um, like. Is, isn't this going to ruin my chances if like you're trying to contact this company like and I was like why would it ruin your chances I was like while they're sitting there combing through 50 applications I'm calling and say yo I have somebody for you right now who's vetted yeah. who's qualified who can work for you right now waste you know have your HR team save their their four hours of shifting through interviews and doing paperwork this is yeah. the, this is the woman for you yeah. and she's like, I guess that it's, makes it's, sense but you <laughs> You have the potential solution that could save the, the company right now needs needs a solution because they may they, yeah. they may go under in six months a year without your solution. Yeah. If you don't get in front of them right mm -hmm. now, you you are mm -hmm. doing them a disservice, and you are letting your own insecurities. You're being selfish, letting your insecurities get in the way of their solution. Yes. And it is your moral imperative: mm -hmm. get the fuck out there, get the solution <laughs> in front of them. Because not you are literally killing them. So get out there. The best of mindset you need. You got to believe yeah. in you so much. You know, yeah, you're yeah. just like, if, if you don't get out in front of them, like, in the, here, here's a, a fun little game. If you really want to, like, incorporate this in your, in your soul, yeah. start doing this. Make a promise to yourself. Next time you're on the phone with somebody that you could potentially close, but you don't, you have to call them back and apologize mm -hmm. for not closing them. Oh, oh. That's that's thug. <laughs> Ooh, I like you're that. doing them a disservice. I like that. I like, like that. Oh, call back and apologize. God, watch, watch, watch uh, who are you? <laughs> oh, <laughs> then you're gonna start closing Ooh. everybody, you know? Because uh, yeah, I might not. I that's might not post I this episode. <laughs> Man, I'm gonna I save these idea. gems for myself. <laughs> yeah, 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 you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like say that one. That hey, that's that's deep. And that's another thing I think um I think that as military recruiters, um, I know a lot of us, I know, you know, me and Roy have talked about this too, is um there's a little bit, I guess I would say less I don't want to say heart in it because we love our jobs and we do a great job because you know we we love being in the military and stuff like that. But there's so much less writing on it, you know, like you know, like you don't close on somebody. That's a ten thousand dollar check you may not have to pay your bills. Mm -hmm. You know, with yeah. us, it's like, oh, you know, if that person doesn't join, like, hey, I'm on salary. Like, I'm still getting paid first and the fifteenth. You know, and so um, I think that I was talking about. I was talking to Adrian about that. Is like sometimes I think it's actually good when you have like a lot riding on it because, like you said, it makes you throw yourself out because you're like, I ain't got nothing. I can't do shit else. I got to throw myself in front of this. Yeah. <laughs> But but you know what though? Like I think he said something that kind of like kind of hit me because like mm -hmm. I think about this all the time. Like it's selfish to me as a military recruiter, it's selfish to have all of these these luxuries and these mm -hmm. opportunities that you have. How how is it so hard to go tell people to help them get out of their own insecurities yep. to get out their own way? Their own way to like yep. get what you got. Like yep. to me, like that's it's a it, it's your moral imperative. Man, <laughs> that's, God, that's, that's such like a paradigm shift. Because, <laughs> <Yeah, yeah. laughs> man, I think a lot of, like, I'll be like, I always, I always say, like, I'm not a recruiter. I'm not a salesman. Like, I'm just a very good offerer. I'm like, bro, I'm offering you this and you don't want it. Well, oh, bro, you crazy. Yeah, we got a meeting with That's our whole is that sales team or the whole state of California uh leadership team for recruiting tonight is having dinner and I'm gonna drop that I'm gonna drop that <laughs> shit on them. Hey for all y'all <laughs> if you're really passionate about it like what you how you believe it so much that's gonna get like you know I mean I mean you're is Christian or not but you look at the early Christians and they were so persecuted. Not my really religious, but I, I can look at it as a, yeah. Um, yeah. a lesson. As a lesson. Yeah. These were the Christians when they're, they're persecuted. They 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 were on the hill preaching, and nobody was listening. And people yep. were throwing rocks trying to kill them. Yeah. And, and they they just they believed so much. Yeah. And that's your own good word. You're you're, you're putting out your own. You're the pro. Like in in a way, like the thing that you have. You're the prophet of that thing. Exactly. Yeah. Um. You just got to spread that word, and some of those people aren't going to take it. But you know that I think I think passion trumps 
the sales skill. In fact, you know, show me someone with I with uh, passion and give it enough time, they'll out they'll out produce someone with polish. Yeah, you know, because uh, people uh, can feel it a, a long enough of a timeline. Yeah, people can. I feel like people can. So, like, you know, a little bit about you know, I guess we didn't, we should have this in the beginning, but like about me and Roy, like me, I I'm like <clears throat> I'm an only son to a single mother. I went to 13 different schools growing up, three different high schools. I mean, oh. yeah, I, I it's, it's wow. just like, and, it, and my mom always apologizes, but I always tell her like, but you made me who I am. Like, I, cause I, when I showed up to a school, it was like, okay, we're making friends today. You, Johnny, like, let's hang out. And so, um, but anyways, but like, I barely graduated high school. Me and Roy have a joke that I went from a 0.6, I went from failing lunch to owning a house in California. Um, cause I literally was like, not going to graduate high school, joined the air force and the air force did all these things for me. And I was so appreciative once I became a recruiter. It's like you said, like I was very vindictive about it. Like you don't understand what this product will do for your life. Like it took me from like, I was probably going to be on the streets to like, I'm so successful now. And then Roy, same thing. Like, you know, um, he's from St. Louis and I'll let, I'll let him talk. About it. <laughs> I mean. I mean, yeah, like, cause, like for me, like growing up, it was there was only a handful of ways you could go. Um, so for me, like just coming into the Air Force and just understanding where I could have been or what I could have been doing back home, it was just I had that much more of a drive and just being able to travel and then coming into recruiting. <clears throat> excuse me, it was just it was an even more eye opener because I got to work with more civilians on this side and yep. they were in sales and marketing, working with radio stations, working with the saints and working with the Pelicans down in New Orleans. And my mind was just like, wow, one, I enjoyed it Two, It was like, I just got paid to tell my story and just yeah. like just offer it to people. And sometimes it stuck. And then I look back now, some of the people that I had a conversation with still ended up coming back around and yep. joining the air force. So, it's still that's awesome. out of my book. Well, dude, that's, that's why I love recruiting so much because it's, you know, I, I like selling, but at the end of the day, like I, I like, I like, uh, that's why I like training so much because I like, I love to see the transformation. Yeah. And <clears throat> because of me, because of what I put in them, they you may not be immediate, but eventually they're going to have a transformation and, and their entire trajectory, their life completely changes. And then we think about the life, the, the, uh, the effect that they have on others. Yeah, and yeah. and that those people have others. It's kind of like that movie. I forget the name of it, but um, it's a crash. I, or oh, a crash. Yeah, or, crash. Well, there's both. Pay it forward yeah. is like you do something nice, and that person does something nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah so. exactly, exactly. Like there's there's <clears throat> the effect that you have on people. You know, that's why uh, it, you have to be thinking about all the 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 end level consequences of what yeah. you do, either positive mm -hmm. or negative. And people don't because they're so selfish. And um, I think you know you you start. You, as a recruiter, man, you get something in the great opportunity or, or whatever, man, their entire life changes. Oh, yeah. But but speaking to what you used to worry about being St. Louis, which, by the way, I, I lived in that area for a couple of years. I was in uh, Belleville. Oh. Uh, but I, but I, when I did the labor thing, I was, I, was in, I worked in a labor ready in, in, in U City and then Granite City. No, it was U City, then Florissant, and then uh -huh. uh, Granite City. So I was kind of familiar with some of those. And I would always, you always try to avoid East St. Louis. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta go around. Don't don't stop at that stop sign. Uh, yeah. yeah. Just go. You got a flat tire. Just keep on, keep on going, man. Yep. Um, but, um, um, uh, but I do remember, though, that, um, you know, seeing, you know, I've met a lot of people from, you know, uh, very good backgrounds, very mm -hmm. bad backgrounds, mm -hmm. kind of everything in between. And, and and everybody has their own struggles, but you know, like yeah, you know, how you how you put it was that um, you know there's a couple different ways you can go, but it, for a lot of folks, that's kind of all they have. But there's always that other way, and there's always like there, there's a book called from Ryan Holiday, "The Obstacle Is the Way." You guys mm -hmm. have probably heard of it, um, and about how the obstacle that you have oftentimes that's actually the way you need to go, not around it, not to the way. The biggest oh, yeah. obstacle you got, you go, you go straight towards that motherfucker and <laughs> you scale it. Yeah. Because that makes you the person you are. Like I have a, um, I talk about this sometimes. I have a speech impediment. Mm -hmm. I was uh, uh, at a very, very severe one. I still have it, but you, you can't tell. But um, it was that 
speech pedant in my process of beating it without therapy that made me into a, a talker, maybe into yeah. being in sales because it's, and it made me realize that I didn't have to be a victim of this thing where that could have, you know, that yeah. could have completely ruined my life yeah. had I let it, you yeah. know, and, and, but the obstacle is the way that the thing that is the biggest thing in front of you, you again, you, you scale up motherfucker and you just get, get the <laughs> fuck over it, figure it out. I like man. it. I like awesome. it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, um, I, I feel that. I mean, cross when I got out of the Air Force, that was a uh, that you know royalty. That was one of the scariest decision I probably ever did in my entire life. Um, coming, you know, because I went from you know being able to sign a, a eight year contract to being able to only sign a three year contract. You know, so technically the state of California would be like, nah, man, we don't need recruiters anymore. Like, you're good, but um, you know, it was one of those things where, like you said, like I was like, you know, am I really gonna let? the being scared stopped me from what the, the goal here is, you know? And so, uh, and it's been the best decision ever, but it was, it was, it was scary, man. And it's taken a lot to like learn how business is done here and stuff like that. But it's been, um, you know, it was totally worth it. So I feel that the whole go towards your obstacle thing. That's awesome. Yeah. It's, I'll tell you what, man, uh, uh, that I think is one of the most important lessons I think anybody can learn. You know, I, I want to, I've got, with my children, I want to teach, I'm teaching that same sort of flaw, the stoic, stoic philosophy. Like yeah. no one will ever, no one will ever tell you you're a victim. Don't ever believe yeah. it. You are yeah. not, you're only a victim of yourself. Um, yeah. cause you think about it, even, even the person who might be homeless today, that person, it lives like a king compared to someone in Zimbabwe right now right yeah like that person looks like a king um and so it's it's all kind of like relative right i mean it's yeah. just people have bad hands but then again i could be i could be from cambodia with even worse hands so you know yeah what you know i'm gonna bitch about you know yeah. oh it sucks so, i mean you be you're, you're <laughs> fucking american man i mean you, get, you know <laughs> make you know and and make something happen yeah. um yeah. You know, here's, and I'll tell you my story. So I know you mentioned at the beginning of the show, you want to hear the story about my first yes. placement as an yes. Yes. Is, <laughs> that. So, so when I, when I started um, uh, 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 in search, I was doing insurance underwriting uh, recruiting. So I was in placing underwriters for insurance, insurance companies and, you know, it's yeah. about as boring as, as it sounds. <laughs> Almost with a little seep right there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, and, but but I started seeing like this, the fees. I'm like, oh man, I can do this by myself. I don't have to, I don't have to pay the house like you know 60 yeah. percent of what I was making. So I I went and started, and I went over to um, uh, SAP, which you know type of, uh, of IT system. The fees were much bigger. I didn't know anything about IT. I was actually fairly intimidated by it. But um, I quit and uh, started doing it, and I ran out of cash because <laughs> um, my last six months working for this other firm, I I went from being the biggest biller to billing mm-hmm. nothing because my eye was off the ball. I was yeah. thinking I was doing all these different plans and mm-hmm. what's my electric going to be like, mm-hmm. like, like stupid shit that yeah. was keeping me from doing it. So I ran, I burned through my cash, and I was forced to do it. So I did it. And uh, uh, at the time, there was no, we didn't have LinkedIn, you know, it was pre LinkedIn days. Uh, I had no applicant tracking system. Uh, my applicant tracking system was manila folders. Hey. Um, and I would print off resumes. And then I ran out of ink. And one day I had to make a decision. I almost shoplifted ink from Walmart. I didn't <laughs> do it, but I was so close. I'm like, oh, oh, yeah. I was feeling, you know, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, could, I couldn't bring myself to do it. Yeah. And I never did. Um, ended up uh, selling drugs for a little bit during that time just to, I, I, was, I, was, I, was, fl- I was flipping uh, you know, ecstasy at the time, Ooh. trying trying just to That's why I make about enough. Raves. <laughs> yeah so that was, that was my you know um and so i was doing that a bit um That's and so man. that was yeah that was, that was a weird life man but i was i was doing it just to just to make ends yeah. meet and, and feed my yeah. kid so um anyway so i get i get nine nine offers from you know various companies in Canada. i was really working at work working it get nine offers right yeah um over the course of like maybe six to seven months eight months and this is my biggest losing streak i've ever had mm-hmm. and i had no money and it just was crazy and at nine offer turn downs turn down turn down oh, wow. turn down turn down turn down i'm like yeah. god damn it at some point man this has got to turn <laughs> like is this, is this universe trying to tell me something or is this yeah. my test yeah so. it turns out it was my test and yeah. so my very first thing that hit was uh, it was Valero Energy. 
So mm-hmm. it, was a, it was an oil company out of, out of San Antonio. And I remember the guy's name. The guy's name was um, Zoltan Mayer, Hungarian. <laughs> nice. SAP FICO yeah. analyst. Yeah. Um, it's just, it says I can look up Zoltan. Like, listen to this podcast. Uh, Zoltan <laughs> you Mayer. Made you man. Um, <laughs> and so this is back in 2002 or three, I want to say. Uh, so, or yeah, something like that. Anyway, so anyway, so it was a $28,000 fee, roughly. 28 and some change. Oh, wow. So he has like a 30% from a fee from like, he was making 95, I think, something like that. Anyway, so I, I, I get it. And I'm like, I'm like, oh my God, thank you. And then it's just a matter of the waiting game, waiting for the check. Because, yeah. uh, oh, mm-hmm. oh, by the way, kids, if, if you're not aware of this, checks are this like little paper <laughs> in, instrument that's good for money, right? And they would sign it and, <laughs> and you mail it. Oh, oh yeah, kids. There's things, they, they, they call it the mail. I mean, if you kid, <laughs> you know. They, back in the old days and so um i'm waiting and had, had this oh yeah there's a thing called a mailbox did you guys know this is a mailbox it used to be in the front of your house and i used to wait for it so anyway i waiting for this check to come and and the check finally come i get it now i'm like and uh i'm like i need a business bank account <laughs> i should probably incorporate <laughs> so i wasn't even incorporated so I go to the bank and and I had I think I had uh, I had gotten and incorporated and I got a, a business bank account right before I got the checks. I did think enough like, well, maybe a week before I'll do all that or yeah. or whatever. Um, and so they wouldn't take the check because it was a brand new account. It was super suspicious. Plus, I had a personal account that I bounced checks on because I, I didn't have any money. Uh, so they're like, no, we're we're good. And so. I, I did the next best thing, and the only thing I could do, I went to Amscot, which is a check cashing I was service. Say, you went to a check cashing place. <laughs> yeah, I went to Amscot in a bad part of Tampa, because funny enough, they're not in good parts of Tampa for some reason. So I go, I go to Am, <laughs> Amscot, and 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 I'm like, "Will you take this?" And so they call my client, oh. which that was an embarrassing. Call ground is accounts payable, but then but then I'm sure accounts payable yeah. went to the my manager. Like, what's good? So they they approve it. And um, it, 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 I think it was like 500 bucks or something like that. Yeah. And they gave me $10,000 in cash and the rest in like my order or cashier's check, yeah. whatever. And, and, and everybody, it wasn't like I was being hidden. Like there were people there like oh. getting their give the cash checks. So I walked out of there with, a, with pockets full of cash and cashier's checks, about 20 grand total roughly. And man, I'm sweating bullets. But I made it, <laughs> I made it alive. No, no yeah. one, no mug me. <laughs> and, um, and that was my first placement. And so when people say I'm not ready, yeah, like, uh, yeah, I'm. Oh, I wasn't even. I'm sorry, my uh, oh. <laughs> my thing came off. There we go. I would. So anyway, uh, uh, when they say they're not ready, I'm like, man, I wasn't even incorporated. Like, yeah, they were just talking about that today on the on uh, the pot. You know, Ben po- dropped his his Facebook live thing today, mm-hmm. um, and that was exactly one of the questions. That was one of the first things I started talking about was like they were saying they love how when people on the that group his group ben nader's group they're like when should i start or like hey i'm building my website and he's like get clients <laughs> like, yeah you know like you don't you don't need to be incorporated you don't need a website like like find people that just want to do work with you first like granted you need those things of course eventually but like don't don't like wait to actually start reaching out just until you have those things yeah. yeah, it's for true. But you know, but I will say this. I mean, there's also the, you know, if I had, I, you know, if I will say if I had done some preparation, things would have been easier. Yeah. There's a good mix. Sometimes it's like going to the gym. You know, you're not going to go, uh, you, you see somebody doing a clean joke or two and a quarter. And you're like, I want to do that. But you never, and then the next thing you know, you, you, you've got some like crazy back injury because you, you just, you shouldn't have been even attempting that, yeah. that, that, that movement. Um, yeah, so there's there's a mix of that, but yeah, there is you gotta at least get get yourself out there uh and start talking. If nothing else, you know, uh, start whatever niche that you're in, figure out okay, how can you get on the phone with decision makers in that niche and then talk to them, but not just talk to them about like tell me about the industry, tell me about your pains, like like you, you get a good sense of what that's what I've been doing, yeah. They're, yeah, they're nightmare scenarios. Yeah. And 
my best scripts are the ones where that have lines direct that come directly from they tell me like their worst nightmare scenario i just well shit that sounds great i'm gonna yeah. i'm gonna put that in my script and then next yeah. thing you know you got like a, the ultimate script you know yeah and that's um so just start talking to people that's that's the key man i can dig it yeah man yeah well, I know that I know Roy's giving me that look. He's like, hey, we're getting close to time. Yeah, about, about uh, that time. Yeah, um, uh, well, yeah, no, I, you, you, you probably party all night, so no, uh, I mean, like I said, there's three of us, man. We, we talk too long. Um, yeah, yeah, but now we, uh, I'll let, I'll let Roy, you got any close anything closing, man? Like, you want to well, say, no, like it's been very insightful, uh, very inf uh, informational for me. Uh, gained a lot of knowledge from you, so I really appreciate you. Um, Thanks, man. Honestly, just to jump on here and like talk to us about it, yeah. um, because it's, I mean, like we know you're busy. We know you're busy. Uh, yeah. And, and, for you to, like, <laughs> and for you to take a, a, a hour and some change out of your time just to chat with us and like help other people. Man, yeah. Like we man, really appreciate well, you. Man. you know, um, well, I'll tell you, it's been a lot of fun. I'll be candid with you. You know, I, I, uh, I'm always a bit wary about uh, where I give my time because yeah, I, I've of really learned like I, I really need to protect it, of and uh, you know. But, but Ben had recommended you guys, and you guys talked to Tim. I'm like, all oh, right, you guys might be cool. And then <laughs> and this podcast, I gotta tell you, is probably one of my most enjoyable ones. This, is, <laughs> we, so this, this, this we had great. we had fun. <laughs> this is this is awesome. Uh, yeah. No, we appreciate it. Uh, I, you know, I, obviously, like you saw, I'm kind of the one that's just been reaching out, and I. I will say the recruiting community has been um, just arms wide open. I'm, I think everybody I've contacted um, and talked to is, has been more than open. I thought it was going to be a little bit less like, sorry, man. Like, nah, I'm not going to tell you how I do business. Like what's so even my competition, but uh, it's actually, I've been telling Roy, it's actually been really great. Um, so it just, it just solidifies even more that we, this is where we want to stay at whenever our time comes to an end in the military. Um, well, you know, you know why, man? I think I think the land of recruiting is like the land of misfit toys. You know, <laughs> like it, it's like we we all belong, but we're also different. But we all have the yeah. one thing in common. You know, yeah, yeah. Land of misfit toys, man. Yeah, we are. Um, but no, we appreciate, it, sir. Uh, I, I had a great time. This is probably probably the most I've laughed on a podcast. So far. <laughs> yep. <laughs> awesome. Um, if, yeah, you know, Lewis, otherwise, um, I don't know if you want to plug your program or anything right now. We always like our guests. We always give you guys the option to tell uh, people they know what I do. Yeah. They know how to yeah. find yeah. me. Yeah. They can't find me. They don't deserve my program. They, they, I like it. Yeah, I like it. There you go. I like it. Um, you know, the executive recruiter group. So other than that, um, that's it. Unless you have anything else. That's it, guys. Hey, let's do it again. I'm, I'm really appreciative. And and also, love to have you guys on my show as yeah. well. The Headhunters and Boxers talking smack. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, boxers <laughs> optional. So. Let's do it. Let's do All it. Right. Well, this has All been right, another guys. episode. We appreciate you, sir. Boom. All right. Appreciate everybody. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Bye. They always be.